Hello, hello, hello. So I've got a project for you that um, it's an ideal project if you've been learning Python for a couple of months. And when you hear it, you'll probably think, oh no, not that, I've seen that recommended elsewhere. But trust me, it's definitely worth doing if you haven't done it yet. And if you have done it, there are little tweaks that you can do to make it more involved and a little bit more complex. Uh, and, and that would be worth doing as well. So what I want you to do, if you're looking for a project, and it's really important to use projects because tutorials are all very well, but you don't really learn or, or cement that learning until you've done some projects. So what I want you to do is to create a text version of tic-tac-toe or noughts and crosses, as we call it in the UK. And that seems a better name for it. I don't know what tic-tac-toe means. I don't know whether it has some meaning that I don't understand. Um, but noughts and crosses seems a much better way of describing the game. So it's the game, you know, with a little grid where you put a nought and a cross, and the idea is to get three in a row. So if you've not done that before, do that. If you have done that before, a text version of that, see if you can make a version with um, a GUI, with a graphical user interface, and you might be able to do um, something with Pygame or TK Inter. Is it TK Inter? I don't know whether it's TK Inter or, or T Kinter. Anyway, that's a Python module as well, which enables you to do graphics. And if you've done both of those, then see if you can take what you've done and put it within a web framework. Uh, and that would be a nice little addition to move that project on. And if you've done that before, then see if you can implement some kind of uh, clever algorithm that will either always at least draw or win when playing tic-tac-toe. Uh, and there is an algorithm and you'll have to do some searching in order to find that algorithm. Now, of course, you could just go online and search for the answer, but that's not gonna help you, so don't do that. So if you're looking for a project, commit to this and really try to do it. I'm gonna to link to some resources in the description that will help you. I'll also talk you through what you might need to think about if you've absolutely no idea how to do it, but I'm not gonna do it for you because there's no point in you just copying uh, another tutorial. This is a, a project for you to do. So this is moving away from a tutorial and your own project. Uh, and also I've got a Discord server where you can go and ask for help. So if you don't know where to start, go and onto the Discord server and, and, and ask some questions on there. Uh, you know, it's a really friendly group and you'll get some useful answers. So let's think about how we can approach this problem. Now you can do this with functions. So you might want a function that displays the board to the user and you want to think about how you're going to do that. And then you want to think about the data structure that you're going to use to represent the board and how you keep track of moves within that data structure and how you check for what's a legal move and what's not a legal move. You need a way of checking if someone has won. And then of course you need to consider things like who's going to be a zero and who's gonna be a cross and, and how you determine that. And then you need to make sure that you can have different moves. So the, the computer moves and, and how are you gonna take care of that? You could just make it a random move to start with before you do something that's a little bit cleverer than that. You're gonna to have to be able to take input from a user and put that input into the data structure and then display the board. So these are just a few things that you need to consider in order to get this to work. So have a think about it and go off and do it. And if you have any problems, go to the Discord server where you can ask for help. Once you've got it working, see if you can redo it with graphics and then find a web framework and a way of putting it online. I think that's a really nice project and you could learn a lot. This video is sponsored by 365 Data Science. Now, how do you fancy learning data science or business analytics for free? If you do, keep watching because 365 Data Science has just completely redesigned and revamped their online learning platform. And to celebrate that, they're giving away one month's access to that platform to anyone that wants to sign up. There are no credit cards required. You can just go to their website and sign up and you'll have access to all of their content, all of the downloadable material, all the courses and all of the exams. Let me just tell you a little bit about what 365 Data Science has. 
They have expert instructors. They have career tracks that you can follow at the end of which you will get a certificate, but only if you pass an exam. And so, yes, there are exams on the platform, but there's support to help get you through those exams. They have a resume builder to help you build the best resume that you can. And then if you want, that resume will get put in front of potential employers. It's a great place to learn and you can do that absolutely free between the 18th of October and the 18th of November 2021. The last time that 365 Data Science made an offer like this was in March and April of last year and over 100,000 people signed up. So why don't you give it a try?